You're listening to Cat Tales and I'm Cat. This tale is about a true rock original. He's a vocalist, bassist, a songwriter and a rock and roll Hall of Fame inductee. No other rock musician has carved such a distinctive style and contributed to the sound of progressive and hard rock. From his first band trapeze of the late 60s, through Deep Purple and Black Sabbath to Black Country Communion, he's the voice of rock, believes that love is the answer and music is the healer, and now he's the latest member of the supergroup The Dead Daisies. This is the one with Glenn Hughes. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Hey, I'm fine actually. How are you doing with all this lockdown business? We're okay, you know, it's... uh. You know, obviously we don't we we haven't really been anywhere. I mean, I just walk every day and and uh, actually I'm going to the dentist today, so it's the first time I've really been out so for a while. But not good one to know. go to the dentist though. Let's be honest, all the places you could be going, Glenn, you've chosen the dentist. What? <laughs> well, you know, I gotta get in there. Um, I got something under a tooth that is either got a bit. I can't flush it out, and oh. it's causing me some pain, and so. I have to. I mean, my dentist is, yeah, they're really good over there, so it's pretty private, so oh. they'll be all right. I'll tell you what, you're lucky. About three weeks ago, I had the most excruciating um, toothache. I don't know where it came from. I don't know whether I'd cracked a tooth mm. or whatever. I've had, I had it for about three weeks. It's now gone, thank God, but I can't get in to see a dentist over here yet because obviously with this lockdown business, they're not working. So it's hell. I know. It? Oh dear. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about, is it? <laughs> it's nice to speak yeah. to you anyway. Um, I wanted to have a chat with you about um, the fabulous new band that you're with, uh, The Dead Daisies. Right. I love that concept, actually, of a morphing supergroup. How did you become a Dead Daisy? Uh, I think I, I got a, a call from from their manager around uh, March of last year um, to see if I would be interested in taking a meeting, first of all. With David Lowy, and he lives in well, he lives in a few places, but he was going to fly in to see me. He lives in New York. And he flew into Hollywood. He was telling me they were changing things around, like they've been doing over the course of three or four years. Every time, you know. Yeah. And um, asked me if I'd be interested in, in working with them. Do I have the time to switch gears to stop doing what I was not stop, but do something a little different? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I said, you know, I thought to myself. Um, it, it, you know, it, 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 I can do many things, as most artists can do skiers and do whatever they want to do. Uh, but I really like to be involved in everything I do. And um, they asked me if I'd come in and, and, and be part of this, you know, and, and continue to write my music like I've been doing. They wanted my songs and my voice to represent the band, if you will. And, and um, I had a lovely talk with David, went home, thought about it for a while. Then I wrote a couple of songs. Then... Uh, we got together in New York in last May, a year ago, around about this time. Flew in there. In fact, he flew out to see me play in Michigan on his jet and flew me back to New York. And Doug came out and Dean and we played these couple of songs and they worked out great. So we decided, we were still kind of not telling people what's going on, but we decided onwards and upwards. And the new single that's come out now is just so you. I mean, I've listened to it and I mm. thought it, immediately it's got your stamp all over it. And, yeah. you know, it's it's distinct with your voice, your style and, and everything. And it's, Thank you. it's a bit of an injection into the dead days, isn't it, in a way, really? Well, you know, that, that's the first song I wrote. And that would have been one of the songs we, we went over. Um, and, you know, when I wrote these songs, I was writing. I wasn't ready for Black Country or, or for Glenn because I was writing Dead Days. It's, a, it's something extreme, as you can hear. It's extremely classic, very early seventies. As they, they were, I'd say they were eighties band before. Now they asked me to come in and take it back to the seventies, which is what I am—a seventies guy, you know. So yeah, I mean, Unspoken is Glenn Hughes uh, for the Dead Days. Is you know, I, I wanted to create a, arena rock music. For a band that deserves to be doing just that, yeah, and you've done that. You have absolutely done that with that with that record. Thank you. And of course, it's going to be the it's the prelim now to the album that's coming out. Um, when is the album going to be released? Because obviously, with everything up in the air, it's a little bit different. And the album, of course, is Holy Ground. When yeah. are you hoping it's out? Well, Cat, I have to be. I haven't been told what to say here, but we were supposed to be releasing it at the end of May, but mm. that can't happen because you can't 
you can't release records that people really can't get or distribution. No one's distributing records right now. So, I, you know, we're through Universal. So it's, it's a part of a, a business thing. Uh, we really, really take, have to take a look at releasing this album when it can be, you know, gotten by everyone. So I would imagine towards the end of the year would be the appropriate time. I can't say when. It might even be January, but it, hey, you know, it, it could be <laughs> three months from now, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Things are changing so quickly now. All I can say to you is this, that the album is chock full of, oh my God, this, this, this is a really good record. Mm. Really outstandingly good record. And recording in France and recording in Hollywood for, I'd say, we did some recording last August at Sunset Sound in Hollywood. And then we went to France in November, December, in between my UK road tour. And then we finished in, in Hollywood in, in February. So it took three or four months to get it, to get it right, you know, yeah. I know, and then you've had all the tour that's had to be postponed, and I suppose really you need that tour to be able to launch the album, and that's the unknown factor at the moment. Yeah, we we were supposed to be going out now. We're supposed to be in New York at this moment, but rehearsing to go out to start on May 29th, but, uh, you know. Yeah. I think an official announcement is coming any minute now, like everybody's announcing now that it's Basically, 2020 is postponed. Mm. Uh, you know, and we all know generally now that's what's happening in the entertainment industry where everything is going to have to be put on the back burner. So I can't imagine, again, this is off record, I can't imagine any anything happening until early next yeah 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 i think that i think you're right everybody's saying the same thing because we're all just in this unknown and of course when everybody can go it's going to be one big party <laughs> well, i hope so <laughs> you know it's really again because the politics and it, it, behind this rather than the science because everybody's just talking politics and the science really is the, is the way to go but you know is there going to be a cure by by next year uh, we don't know it's mm-hmm. like there might be many cures but it's the vaccine is, is, is all waiting on it and the entertainment industry will be hit the hardest because yeah. of the groups of people that will that can't be you can't have social distancing in 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 clubs for sure you know it's tough it really yeah. is tough yeah and i bet it's really frustrating for you because you seem to come alive most when you're on stage does it feel like that for it you it does it cer- it certainly does um I don't know. It's uh, I, I'm very. I guess I'm fit. I'm fit inside as well. I, I, I'm just a very conscious person about where I am in my life right now, and I can't revisit that. I just have to stay present. And this album, when you get to listen to it, everything is about facts, about the human condition. It's very autobiographical stuff. I do write stuff that people can relate to because they're possibly going through the same things. Yeah. But funny enough. It's not really funny, but I wrote this record last year. But when you listen to it now, you'll go, did he know something about this? Oh. Because when you read the lyrics to what I've been writing, you'll go, did he know something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that laughingly because every track is like, you'll go, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm saying like chuckling to myself because, and it's not really funny, but I look at the lyrics, I'm going, oh, yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, but you see, you find that quite amusing. I find that completely understandable with you because I think you're a very spiritual man and you actually walk the talk. I mean, you know, with your, your mantra about being, um, you know, love is the answer and music is the healer. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. You do actually walk that as well as talk it. And I'm not surprised you've Daily. said that. Um, have you got a routine that you do to try and tap into that sort of like consciousness of your, you know, of yourself? Oh, I do. Mm. I work with an Indian fellow, call him a guru if you wish. I have uh, monthly visits to him, I have one on Thursday, about presence, about staying in the moment, about I can't fix that guy that used to be Glenn. So now I, I just work on the guy that is fixable, which is the guy that's living and breathing in this present moment. And my music, I've been told by some meditative people that my greatest meditation is when I'm singing, and you've seen it. Mm. So that's the messenger part of Glenn. That's giving back that spiritual love that the, the universe has given me to give back. I, 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 that's the way I feel. This is my opinion. 
and um, I don't live in a world of hate, I really do. Yeah, I, I totally see that. And, you know, do you feel you've had to let go of that man who used to be, you know, from the deep purple days, oh, yeah. JP days, and, you know, yeah. he's gone? I do. I do, because I was speaking to someone close to me last night about the past. I said, hey, you know, let's not go there anymore. Let's not, let's not go there right now, because, you know, there's so much, so much gossip and so much, you know, so much idle talk about the old Glenn or whatever, or the near-death experiences, the over the topness, the naked on the roof Glenn. And then you've got the sober Glenn for almost 30 years now. And it's like, I'm one of the lucky ones that survived it. You know, numerous people you, you know of didn't survive because they weren't so damn lucky, you know, to who would have thought all those years ago that I would have actually found help and it worked, mm. you know, mm. and it takes a lot of people out. But I've surrounded myself with loving people and great family and uh, great musician friends and great friends and, you know, and we're all super close. But most important thing, I have a real strong connection with the inner Glenn, the little, the little Glenn inside of me, the, the guy that's uh, the inner Glenn, the inner guy, not the outer guy. Yeah. It comes from that within first and foremost, doesn't it? And almost like loving yourself and accepting yourself first. It really is. It's, it's all about acceptance. It's the biggest thing in life that is, is, is letting go, as I talk about it unspoken, to let go of all the past, if you will. It's the past is a dangerous place for lots of people, you know, and, um, and just stay present. Well, why don't we take a quick break now then, Glenn, and listen to Unspoken, the awesome new record from the Dead Daisies. Be right back. <laughs> Start a goal. 
I'm Glenn Hughes and you're listening to Cat Tales. That is brilliant. I love that. I just absolutely love that track. Um, and I see what you mean about the man inside, because we only have this moment, don't we, Glenn? It really is. I mean, it sounds... It, you see, if I was, you know, a young guy listening to this, and would be going, what the fuck's she talking about? Because it's like, I think, for instance, my, I saw my mum and dad in the garden 30, 40 years ago. I'm thinking, what have they got their hands in the dirt for? And now, all these years later, I'm the guy with his hands in the dirt in the garden, planting stuff. And it's just what happens to people when they get older. They they notice the trees more. I plant trees and I notice the flowers more. I'm outside more. I live with the ocean. And, and before I, you know, I got, we got this thing. I mean, I've been living here for 20 years in this house. I live at the ocean here. And all of a sudden, we, in this COVID, I, I get up in the morning and go, my God, I, I actually do live at the ocean. <laughs> I thought, I guess I didn't notice it for a couple of years. It, it's, it's brought me back to nature, if you will. You know, it really has brought me back to nature. And I think a lot of people are finding the same thing, aren't they? And that, you know, that can't be a bad thing. It's almost like the earth has said, uh-huh. you know, hold my wine a second. I've got to sort this out. We're going to, you know, we're going to get to the bottom of this and, and finish this for good. And, and that, I think it's, yeah. it's going to be probably a good thing in the long run, but it's the pain in the, in between, isn't it? It's people really in trouble right now financially. Uh, it's, Health-wise, mental health issues can pop up and, you know, there's no mistakes. I'm supposed to be clean and sober for so long. I would not be able to deal with it if I was taking a drink, you know. It's, it's important for me. And, you, and that's great to hear it's coming out in, your, in this album. It, it's almost like this time now is going to give a lot of people quite a lot of material for something new next year, isn't it? Well, I'm all writing some new stuff at the moment. Um, but if you, I know you, I think you follow my music. I think if I do. you listen to... All my solo records, Soul Mover, and, and all the stuff I've done from the 2000s even the 90s or whatever, you'll hear like the Addiction album, was thought, I don't want to live that way. Again, all my stuff about recovery and awakening. The thing for me has been uh, being awakening for so long now. Each year I've become more awake to the real life presence of who we are as humans. And hence me being a work with a lot of animal charities and we're rescue, we dog rescuers and you know, again, if you're a young kid, you probably wouldn't do be doing this. It's something you do later on in life. But I wish I could have been doing this earlier. But I can't fix that guy, can I? So all I know is is that I think I'm on the right path here. You know, when I started with Joe in Black Country, I decided I was I'm going to make rock now. I cemented my path to to stay. I would say call it classic rock if you will, but call it seventies music. Uh, the, uh, whether it's retro or whatever, I, I, I am the guy that I grew my hair. I thought to myself, my fan base, when you go into legitimately my fan base, as much as I love R&B music, my fan base are hard rock. Yeah. So I said 10 years ago, I, I'm going to go out now. I could have either gone the R&B direction or do music and Motown. But I said, no, no. So I wrote Black Country with Joe, that song. That was the first kind of cementation of Glenn coming back in that realm. And I haven't veered off that course since then. And I'm going to stay in this realm here of doing big songs for big, you know, I think it's arena rock music. Yeah. And that's where it's going to be heard best, isn't it, really? And and that's what you do best because you can hold that stage, you can, you've can you got that presence. And with the music and the lyrics, et cetera, it's about really touching that audience and inspiring them maybe along the path that you've gone. Yeah. Yes, I'm very grateful to have amazing fans. Yeah. And to be involved in this band with my friends, I've known Doug for a long, long time, as you know, and such a funny bunch of dudes. I mean, <laughs> it really is family, you know. I, 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 I mentioned this now because I'm chuckling because I may have said last year or two years ago, Black Country would be the last band I would ever be in. Because I thought to myself, you know, two years ago, well, you know, they, you know we want to make an, another record, you know. So, But, you know, people said to me, well, how come you're in the dead days? Said, well, I'm in there because it's family. And if, I'm, if I'm, I'm an only child, if I get close to someone and they've got something happening and they've asked me to become part of it, I'm already part of it anyway because you're my friend. But it's like, I'm going to join in because I like to be part of something. I like to, I like to hang with people that are close to me that I genuinely care and love about. And when I can extend myself in the musical side of things, because I do carry that message, don't I? All, they're yeah. all, all songs I write are messages. <laughs> mm. They're not subliminal, you know. 
And you've got the opportunity to actually do that. So it's great to hear that you're using your talents and your skills and the fact that you have a fan base who are prepared to listen to you for the greater good rather than just what a lot of, you know, musicians out there could potentially do, which is just make music. So that's an inspiration. Yeah. I, I, you know, again, I'm a singer and writer. The things about that, the human condition, and I've been doing that for since I've been sober, uh, since 1992. So, yeah, I changed my lifestyle completely and, and brought into this. I mean, when I look back at my songs I wrote in the 70s, I don't remember the 80s, but I, 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 I was so damn young, you know, and now I'm writing about stuff that has happened to us as people. And again, for me, I think spiritually for me, if I can carry messages to, to help people, that's all that matters. Really all of the matters. Oh, that's brilliant, Glenn. That's absolutely brilliant. And it's been such a pleasure speaking with you and I wish you all the best with all that. And um, yeah, I, I'm a big admirer of your tenacity and your spirituality and it's it's a pleasure to... Thank you. This time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank See you soon. Chat. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 You've been listening to To listen again to this and other tales, go to cattails.co.uk 